What's going on guys? This is Jerry Neutron and today I got a little something for you guys here. Uh, this is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo CPU Cooler. Uh, now this cooler is probably uh, the most popular CPU cooler that is out there to date. Uh, not just for its performance but for its value as well. Uh, for around 30 to 40 bucks you pretty much get uh, an excellent CPU cooler that is capable of handling uh, pretty much anything that you throw at it, whether you're on the Intel uh, or AMD side. And uh, I picked this up actually to replace my Hyper TX3, also by Cooler Master, uh, just honestly because it was a little bit too loud for my taste. Uh, it did fine with the mild overclocking uh, that I was doing. But uh, I wanted something that had a little bit larger fan uh, that ran at a lower RPM. So I decided to pick this up and uh, I have to say so far I'm pretty satisfied. But I'm just going to do a quick overview uh, about this product and the install process uh, that I went through with this. So uh, just jumping right into the overview of the product, uh, what you get here is a... CPU cooler that has a 120 millimeter fan on it. Uh, it's got four direct contact heat pipes that'll help uh, dissipate the heat from the CPU cooler. Uh, and it's actually on the bottom of the cooler itself. It's all flat, so there's no gaps in between the heat pipes, which uh, from my understanding, the previous 212 coolers had that uh, and it wasn't really optimal for cooling, so this has improved upon that a little bit. Uh, as far as the specs go, dimension-wise, uh, this particular cooler is 120 by 77 by 158.5. Uh, so it's actually a rather large cooler. It uh, is definitely bigger than the TX3 that I had before this, so uh, you definitely want to make sure you have a case that is wide enough to fit this CPU cooler. Uh, life expectancy is 40,000 hours, uh, noise level is 9 to 36 dBA. Uh, it comes with a 4-pin fan connector, so you do get the PWM functionality, so you can uh, vary the fan speed. Airflow is 24.9 to 82.9 CFM, and this works with pretty much all uh, consumer CPU sockets to date. Uh, modern CPU sockets that is, so Intel 2011, 1155, etc, etc. Uh, for the AMD side, it works with AM3 Plus boards, uh, FM2, FM1, you get the idea. Now as far as the fan goes on this thing, uh, it's actually a plastic fan. Uh, definitely feels a lot uh, better quality than the uh, case fan that I have uh, from Cooler Master as well. Uh, it just feels a lot sturdier. feels like it is spins a lot smoother. I don't know, I guess you would call that uh, it's more fluid. I wish I could use some for my uh, case fans as well. I definitely would like to upgrade to something like that. Um, I know before they used to come with Blade Master fans, I believe it was. Uh, and I'm not sure if these are the same ones or not, but uh, either way, it's definitely a solid fan, so you really don't have to go out and uh, get a replacement fan for it, in my opinion. Now, as, in, as far as installing this fan on my motherboard, uh, I really didn't have any issues with the install process. Uh, I've read a couple reviews that have said that this uh, CPU cooler is kind of difficult to install. Uh, honestly, I'm not really sure what they were doing. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, it's not very hard to install at all. Uh, you pretty much mount the back plate on the back of your motherboard. Uh, there are some standoff uh, screws, I guess you can call it, that you mount to your motherboard. And then there is a bracket that goes in between the uh, CPU cooler that actually mounts to those standoffs. And that's what holds it onto your motherboard. Now, fortunately for me, having the Cougar Spike case, I had to take out my motherboard uh, completely in order to mount the back plate which that does kind of suck but as far as the actual install process itself it went pretty well uh, 
I did actually forget to install the back plate the first time. I don't know what I was doing, but I sat it off to the side somewhere and forgot about it. And then I kind of had to uh, to redo it, but uh, it, it wasn't difficult at all. So don't have to worry about that. Uh, if you have maybe a small case, you probably should do better just taking it, your motherboard out rather than uh, trying to install it in the case if you do happen to have a motherboard cutout on the back. And also I have Corsair Vengeance RAM, which I have installed on my motherboard and uh, there's plenty of clearance with the Evo and my RAM. Uh, the RAM isn't too tall anyway, but uh, there's definitely plenty of clearance, so that was never an issue uh, as far as mounting this CPU cooler. So I know a lot of guys out there use uh, Corsair Vengeance RAM, so that uh, is a good thing for you guys out there that are using that. You don't really have to worry about clearance with your RAM. Uh, and also, once I got the uh, CPU cooler installed, uh, taking a look at my BIOS, uh, I actually dropped around 7 degrees, I want to say, and uh, about 500 or so RPM on the uh, fan itself. So basically, I got uh, superior cooling and less noise. Uh, is pretty much what that comes down to. Since this fan is bigger than the uh, TX3 cooler, uh, it runs at a slower RPM. Or I should say it moves equal or more air at a, a slower RPM and also the uh, cooling design is superior to the TX3 as well so it lowered my temps so usually at uh, so actually right now at idle I have uh, I'm getting about 46 to 45 uh, degrees Celsius at idle and that's with my fan running at around a thousand RPM uh, so with my motherboard, I can set my fan speed to, uh, it's basically got levels 1 through 9, and right now mine's at level 2, so it's the second lowest fan speed that I can set with my motherboard. So I could easily uh, get this CPU to drop the temps into the high 30s uh, if I wanted to, but uh, right now I'm just focused on uh, getting it quiet and not too crazy. Uh, if I do decide to uh, get a little bit crazy with it and not care so much about sound, I'll probably overclock the uh, AMD A10 5800K CPU that I have to uh, 4.5 gigahertz. It should be able to hit that uh, fairly easy, as I was hitting a 4.4 with my TX3, so not really worried there. But uh, yeah, that should be nice. But like I said, I'm really focused on quiet right now so this meets my needs while giving me superior cooling. Now one last thing for the guys that are running uh, kind of smaller maybe mid tower uh, micro ATX cases uh, you may want to be aware of this my Cougar Spike case does fit this cooler uh, however the top of the heat pipes do press against the side panel uh, luckily there is mesh right there so some of them do poke through and uh, then the ones that do push against it uh, push the uh, side panel a little bit outward but it's nothing too crazy so this is pretty much the biggest cooler that I can fit in this case uh, anything taller than this is not going to fit at all so uh, probably the uh, what were the uh, with on that 158.5 or basically 159 anything like that or larger is not going to fit in this Cougar Spike case so that's pretty much it as far as this uh, cooler goes so let me know what you guys think about this cooler I know it's not the newest on the market and plenty of people have it so let me know if you guys have it and what you think about it in the comments below uh, as always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you want more content. And until next time, guys, see ya.